Hello, my name's Veronica. I'm here to tell you why you should go to the Grey Enchant Conference. Now, if you're able to watch a video online, then you're able to attend this conference because it is an online conference. So why should you go? I've broken up into three reasons. Professional development, great guest speakers, and the pyramid scheme. So we're gonna do them one at a time. There should be chapters where you can skip ahead to the bit that you wanna hear about. But first of all, professional development. Now, did you go to the Corpus Christi Watershed Symposium this year? No, maybe not. And are you booked in for the Church Music Association's Fall Sacred Music Workshop? Yes. Well, these are just two of the things that I've been, um, that I have received emails about asking me to attend, and I cannot attend because I'm on the wrong side of the planet. So, yeah, how's your professional development going? You are interested in Gregorian chant. We need more volunteers trained up to be able to say why Gregorian chant is important. So you need continuing professional development. So you might be saying, wait, I'm not a professional, but even as a volunteer, you get subjected to professional developments to help build up your skills so you become a better and better volunteer. So this, yeah, if, if you're starting from zero, then you've got even more room to expand. So not being qualified is no excuse not to go. And being overqualified, I mean, have you listened to all these speakers before this, the whole week long of special guests? So you should definitely go for your professional development. Now, number two, the second reason is the guest speakers. Now, out of all the guest speakers, I recognize three names. And you probably do too, because these people are fairly famous. There's Dr. Peter Krasniewski. Sorry if I'm getting the name wrong there. Dr. Pete Kapsniewski was a contributor for Corpus Christi Watershed for a little while. He's also on the, the new liturgical movement. He's a contributor for that. And he wrote a great book not too long ago called True Obedience in the Church, which is a fantastic little tiny book. It's really quick to read and it's really interesting. It's not just giving his opinion, but backing it up with different examples from history because the church has been through some really amazingly rocky periods over time. So get a hold of this booklet. It is also available in Espanol and in Portuguese, Portuguese, and in Deutsch, in German. So even if you don't speak English and you're looking at the subtitles at a bad translation of what I'm saying, um, yes, you see if you can find True Obedience in the Church by Dr. Peter Krasniewski and see what you think of it. And if you have any ideas, on, yeah, it's another conversation for another time. But yeah, feel free to put ideas in the comments. Second, Father Chad Ripiger. Has everyone heard of Father Chad Ripiger? He is a priest and an exorcist. So exorcists are already really interesting to listen to when they give talks. He's written a book or put together a book of deliverance prayers, which is a really handy book to, to have a look through. Yeah, so he's made it so it's prayers that the laity can say because we we're not exorcists. We can't. It would be dangerous for us to try the exorcism prayers without the authority. You have to be deputed from the church. Yes. So Father Chad Ripiger is really good on the spiritual warfare and how Gregorian chant um, ties in with that. So that would be an awesome talk. Now, number three is Bishop Athanasius Schneider, who is a bishop, so he's even better. And he's written a book called Christus Vincit, which is a, a thick book, big, heavy. Um, I read the hardback copy that someone lent me. And I, all these books I don't actually have copies of physically, but I can totally recommend them. Christus Vincit is a surprisingly good book to read. It starts off sort of it's like a memoir. So that's, I wasn't expecting that. And you get him growing up in Kazakhstan, I think. Uh, it's been a while since I read it. But he, he just did not have the mass. So he grew up without the mass but with a great respect for the Mass. So finally, when they were able to attend the Mass, they were driving, um, I think it was a train trip. It's ages. It was a long travel every Sunday to go to Mass. That was an important thing. And that's where he's coming from. And, yeah, and then about, yeah, the, the Christ, Christ, um, Christus Vincia is Christ conquers. So, yeah, Christ can overcome all these different barriers that we see. So that is the three, three out of the seven or eight, wonderful guest speakers that they have lined up. Now, the third reason, third reason, which is a bit weird, I haven't seen a, um, an online talk like this before with a pyramid scheme. So I call it a pyramid scheme. It's not quite really, I don't get more money. I, I, yeah, I just get my ticket refunded. I've bought a ticket. If you put down that Veronica Brandt talked you into going to the Gregorian Chant Conference, then I get my ticket refunded. Well, technically, 
I've talked my mum into going already. So I only need two more people to say that I talked you into going to the conference and I kept my ticket refunded. And you can do this too. And it'd be so cool if there's a whole whole um, web of people talking other people into going to the conference because the more people hear about it, the more it spreads. Another reason to go is that 15% of all the profits go to the monks of Norcia. And if you've been keeping up with the Benedictines, the, the actual monastery St. Benedict set up in Italy, uh, there have been um, lots of earthquakes there. So they're still rebuilding from the last earthquake. They had to help with the village as well um, before they can really get to work on the monastery, as I understand it. It's been a while since I looked into it. So, yes, I'm quite happy if my ticket doesn't get refunded because I know the money's going to a good cause. Um, but yeah, it would be great if more people can find out about this conference, find out that Gregorian chant is accessible, that we, there are a lot of people willing and more or less able to help answer your questions about Gregorian chant and get you started. And yeah, open up this, this the treasures of the Catholic Church. So as a Catholic, this is your treasure too. Yeah. So <laughs> I hope you can sign up. I hope you can join us for the Gregorian chant conference it will be a wonderful week and you might know you won't see me there but um yeah i'll be there watching as well okay god bless all of us i just wanted to say i'm wearing this scarf because it's cold here <laughs> so i'm not religious or anything but i just do uh, um, it is actually warmer to put things over your head especially this, this is a woolly sort of thing so yeah, just thought I'd mention it okay, come on